Welcome back to the channel guys. It is me 80 summer full four. So today guys, I'm gonna do my Champions League semi-final predictions guys. Yes guys Champions League semi-finals is here guys. It's gonna be here in a week's time guys So it's, I'm super excited for the games guys I want to know your score predictions in the comments below like I said, please subscribe if you're new on here guys Hit that like button as well as we're trying to hit 2,000 subscribers by the end of the year now, I do want to start when saying this right now, so you can feel free to skip this part. I'll leave time to the description below. And that we're going to be doing a live preview. We're going to be doing a live preview on Friday, May 5th at 5 p.m. Eastern Time. And I'm going to invite any fans of the respective clubs in the Champions League semifinals to be part of the preview. Now, remember, guys, I can only have a maximum of eight people, six people in the audience and two people in the background. So I can I, there's limited slots available so if you want to take part in that you have to direct message me either on Twitter or on discord and I'll send you the link I'll send you the link to give you to have your say and we're gonna be doing this man we're gonna be doing this so like I said guys hit that um notification bell to get notified and real guys so it's gonna be on Friday May 5th at 5 p.m. Eastern time guys remember the time so anyways without further ado let's go ahead and get started with the first game which we have here and I think we need to start with this game because this, for me, is the more historic game. This, for me, is poetic. The Milan Derby. This is, guys, one of the most historic games in football, guys. One of the biggest derbies in the world, you know. And I think for me, what is really interesting, this is one of the most fiercest rivalries in the world. And I have some crazy stats for you guys. That before I even want to get to the actual match, I want to share with you guys some crazy stats. The last time two teams from the same country played against each other and a Champions League semifinal was a Madrid derby and the 16 and 17 season, in which we, of course, know Real Madrid went on to win that one and played, of course, um, oh, no, no, sorry, I think it was a 17-18, 17-18 one, I think. Yeah, 17-18 one, um, in which they played against, um, obviously, Juventus in the Champions League final. So, it's going to be very interesting to see how this one also pans out. Last time Inter made the Champions League semifinals was 2010, and, of course, we all know they went on to win the Champions League that season. And obviously with Milan, the last time they made the Champions League final, semifinals was 2007, and they wanted to win the Champions League. And so this is incredible, man. There is an iconic picture that was taken, and I believe it was 2005, and that was the last time these two clubs played against each other in the Champions League. It's been such a long time, man. It's been such a long time. It's a very historic matchup. One of the most fascinating matchups in the world guys and i'm really excited for this one really really excited and what's so difficult what's so intriguing to me in this moment is that both these teams are still around the same level there's not really a team that's like quote unquote superior to another both these teams are around the same level which makes it even more harder to predict and that's what makes it really intriguing because they're really both around the same kind of level-ish you know and both teams have made the semifinals somewhat unexpectedly the odds were against them you know they finished second in the Champions League groups to heavy hitters like Chelsea and Bayern, respectively. And interestingly enough, uh, neither team is even in the semis. So that's even more interesting, you know? And I just think that for me, what's really fascinating with this one is to see how it pans out, you know? And let's get to the actual match now. So for Inter, man, Skriniar is doubtful. We're not sure if he's be playing either of these two games. And for Milan, in particular, injuries. Uh, we're currently right now, or Pabiga. Pobiga is injured and Florenzi. So these two players are going to be out. They're going to probably miss both games, which is really, really unfortunate. But I think Milan have enough depth. Let's start with Milan first, guys. I want to start with Milan because this is incredible. The fact that they made the Champions League semifinals, especially somewhat of an offseason. You know, they have been struggling a lot this season, Serie A. Obviously, you know, Mike Magnon has been out for a good amount of time. And defensively, they were shambolic. I remember early in the year, guys, in January, they were shambolic defensively. They were conceding goals. And they got hammered at home to Swallow Swallow, which was really, really embarrassing. And since they have picked up, and I think the addition of Dual has made this team better. And I think them playing the three at the back has actually made this team more solid defensively. And um, I think that's what has actually led to Milan being this good. You know, and obviously Giroud coming up clutch in the Champions League uh, knockout stage, scoring that crucial goal against uh, Napoli in the second leg. And then obviously Liao stepping up as well. And what's going to be interesting for me with Milan is the, how are the big guys going to perform? Are they going to step up to the plate and deliver the performance that they need to deliver and this kind of magnitude, you know? And I just think for me, it's going to be very, very fascinating, you know? 
And I think for um, and then another player we need to give a shout out to is Mike Magnon. Mike Magnon has been incredible goal. He's been such an amazing goalkeeper for them. He's made incredible saves for them, and it's probably one of the reasons why they made it this far in the Champions League. For Inter, man, virtually the same could be said. They were in a very difficult group with Barcelona and um, Bayern Munich, and they were not expected to make it through. A lot of people said they will finish third, head to the Europa League, and they proved their doubters wrong and got a victory over Barcelona and got a draw to Camp Now and played pretty well against Bayern. And both games, they, they they actually put up a good game despite the fact they couldn't score any goals. They, they didn't concede four goals in the process. In the round of 16, they're up against Porto. A lot of people expected Porto to advance, especially with the second leg being at home. They defied the odds, kept clean sheets home and away. Onana came clutch in the second leg in particular, making those huge, huge saves. Uh, then in the, and then the game against Benfica, once again, they were the underdogs at Benfica. Um, they managed to beat Benfica in Lisbon. And they managed to get a draw at the San Siro. So you have to say Inter have definitely defied the odds. Inter have been the underdogs pretty much at every single stage. They have they they have been part of in the Champions League. And that's been commendable, man. That's been very commendable. I think for me, for Inter, they have to step up. You know, I'm looking at Lautaro Martinez. Lautaro Martinez, for me, has needs to step up in this kind of game. He needs to step up and deliver the goals that needs to be scored. Because for me, he's a very hot and cold striker. He's just not been good enough in front of goal. Um, however, he has come clutch in the big games. That should be worth noting. And I think this is a huge game to um, step up in. Obviously, Onana is going to need to be incredible as well. Barella as well. And I'm looking at players like Bastoni as well. That's to be per perform Lukaku as well and everything like that. And like I said, guys, it'll be very interesting. So before I give you guys my score predictions, I do want to let you guys know that we have actually had three derbies this season. And Inter has won both games. Inter has won both games. Milan won the first meeting early in the season. And it's been that like that. So this will be the fourth and fifth meeting, respectively. My prediction for which team is going to advance. Personally, for me, I just think Inter for me will advance. I feel like Inter for me is just the more solid of the two teams. And I feel like for me, Inter just have the character attitude to do this. My issue with Milan is that I just feel like for me, they are a very good team and I respect Milan. I just feel like for me, Milan don't score enough goals. That's my big concern with Milan. Whereas I feel like Inter can't score a amount of goals. I feel like the strikers like Lautaro Martinez and Lukaku and Dzeko is more clinical than Liao and Giroud. Now, that being said, Milan is um, very good defensively. We have seen that. you know. So it's going to be very interesting to see how this pans out. And like I said, guys, this is really 50-50. I, uh, I, I really, it's difficult to call. But I just have Inter to slightly edge this through in the second leg. I have this feeling the second leg will go to extra time. And I have Inter to just narrowly advance, guys. Narrowly advance to the Champions League final, guys. Um, and, it's, yeah, it's going to be very interesting to see what happens. Let's go ahead and move on to the next game, guys. Next game we have here is Manchester City versus Real Madrid. Rematch of last season's Champions League semifinals. Manchester City, man. Can they get revenge? Can they get revenge? Because I'm looking at this Manchester City team, man. They're on course for a treble. They're on course for a treble. FA Cup. Premier League, Champions League, they're on course for a flipping treble, guys, which they haven't done so. And for me, you uh, people are going to tell me, what about the domestic treble they did the 1819 season? That was a domestic. This will be a real trouble because this will include the Champions League. They didn't win the Champions League that season, as we know. They got knocked out by Spurs in the quarterfinals that season. And I just think that for me, for Manchester City, they're coming into this in great form. Erling Holland is banging in goals for fun. He has been an incredible goal-scoring form. He's been phenomenal. And I look at the introduction uh, of Akanji, who's been excellent in defense. And I look at this Manchester City team, and they're playing a different formation. They're not playing their traditional 4-3-3. They're playing like a 3-3-1-2. Three, three, like, it's a very weird formation. It's somewhat of a 3, you know, 3 at the back, basically. And they're playing Stones of the CDM, which is very odd. However, it's worked out very well, you know. And I just think that for me, for City, they're basically not using their fullbacks anymore. They're basically not... And they're getting the most out of KDB and Holland, and I think that's it's taken Pep some time to figure out how to get the best out of Holland to make this team work, you know, because it's taken several months. You know, you could see how we saw earlier this season Manchester City were dropping points to teams that they shouldn't be. You know, they were dropping points like Nottingham Forest. You know, they were dropping points to like you know Everton, you know, etc. And now they have gone on a winning streak. You know, they haven't dropped. They haven't lost a game since I believe the Manchester derby. I believe that was the last time they lost a game this year. You know, that is in the Premier League, of course, you know. And I just think that for me, it's very, very commendable to see what Pep Guardiola has done. And obviously, the second leg being at the Etihad is a sizable advantage. Now, for Real Madrid, on the other hand, how have they been this season? This season has been relatively 
a good season and an underwhelming season, I would say. I think if you're a Real Madrid fan, you're very disappointed with this season because you're especially in the La Liga title, man. Like, you're 11 points behind as a Barcelona as of today. That's kind of shambolic. Like, like I say, it doesn't matter what... It doesn't matter, man, the excuses. To be 11 points behind your biggest rivals is quite embarrassing, you know? And this is Real Madrid. This is a club that wants to win all the trophies they possibly can, you know? And so for me personally, if Real Madrid don't win the Champions League, it's a failure of a season. This season is a failure. That's just the standards they have at the club, despite the fact they've won the UEFA Super Cup, despite the fact they've won the Club World Cup, and they're likely to win the, uh, what is it called, uh, Copa del Rey. You know, for me, for Real Madrid, if they don't defend their Champions League title, this season will be a disappointment. You know, that's just the standards they set out there. Now, for Real Madrid, I believe at the time of recording this video, I believe Militao will be suspended for the first leg due to yellow card accumulations, who's going to be a big blow. He's been one of Real Madrid's best center backs this season. He's been incredible. You know, um, he's been amazing. I just think he's um, he's been amazing for um, Real Madrid. Um, and I think for um, Manchester City in particular, man, they, they can exploit that, you know. And also, I believe Real Madrid don't have Modric. I believe Modric is injured um, at the time of recording this video. He may be back because I'm recording this on... April 29th, so he may be back uh, for the first leg, but as of right now, I don't think he is going to be. So let me go ahead and check um, any other injuries that is um, occurring. I believe Modric is injured. I know Militao is suspended. Um, anyone else? I think that's it for Real Madrid. I don't think there's more injuries. And for Manchester City, I don't think there's any injuries they have right now. Maybe Phil Foden. I think Phil Foden's the only injured player. So let me go ahead and double check here. If there's any injured players, da, 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 Real Madrid, Man City, let's see, Real Madrid, Man City, um, uh, Fralamendi is out, and David Alaba is out, ooh, and Nathan Ake, now luckily, it says here on FootMob, they're gonna be out for the early May, so, they should probably be in time for the first leg, I would imagine, but if not, that's gonna be a huge blow for, um, uh, for, um, Real Madrid in particular. Because the thing with this Real Madrid team is that I think they have been playing better as a team. I think in terms of playing as a team, I think they have been a lot better because, let's be real, guys, last season the Champions League was pretty much individual brilliance. It was individual brilliance for Benzema and Courtois, and I think that's why they made it this far. This season, on the other hand, they've been playing better as a team. Now, Benzema, for me, has not been in the same form as he was last season in the Champions League. He's not been as prolific. Um, he's still been great. He's still been amazing. You know, scored two goals against Liverpool. I think Scorey, sorry, scored three goals. Um, he scored one of the Bernabeu, I believe, and then scored a goal against Chelsea. But the thing is, he hasn't been as prolific a form as he normally has been. And I just think for me, it's going to be interesting to see how this one pans out. Because for me, Real Madrid have been great attacking-wise. But I think the concern for me as a Madrid fan is how they've been in the first half of the Champions League. I've seen the games against Chelsea and Liverpool in which they should have conceded more goals. Like... You know, and I just think that for me, for Real Madrid, their game plan is to allow the opponent to dominate them the first half and keep it nil-nil, and then the second half, they'll just finish off the game. That's kind of what I've been seeing in the Champions League thus far, and I feel like that's not going to work, especially against Manchester City, because Manchester City is clinical. Because Liverpool and Chelsea are not clinical. Manchester City is clinical, especially with Erling Holland this time, because we all saw last season on the Champions League semifinal, the first like how Manchester City could have easily destroyed Real Madrid. It could have been three, it could have been four or five nil, guys. But it wasn't that because of how many chances they were missing. And remember, guys, Manchester City didn't have their fullbacks playing. Kyle Walker, I believe, was injured at the time. So they put in uh, John Stones at right back and put Fernandinho. You know, it obviously didn't work out. You know, this time around, Manchester City are not even using fullbacks. And so I think they're much better defensively than they were last season, which I think is very crucial uh, for Real Madrid, for Manchester City to ensure that they're defensively solid. So for me, it's really difficult to call this one. I think it all depends what happens the first leg. If Real Madrid can win the first leg, then I think they advance. Otherwise, I don't see it happening because Real Madrid would therefore have to win at the at the Santiago, sorry, the Etihad Stadium, which I don't see that being possible, considering how good Manchester City are at home. You know, and for Manchester City, as long as they don't lose the first leg, even if they lose the first leg by one goal, I'd still say they're in a good position the second leg at the the Etihad. But for me, for Manchester City, as long as they don't lose the first like by two or three, two or more goals, then I think they're in a good position. So I think for me, if Manchester City come come out of the first half at the Etihad being one nil up, you know, being uh, two one up or something like that, then I think they're in a good position to not lose the game. 
because for Real Madrid, they want you to have that kind of false sense of security. So for me, it depends on first half. If Real Madrid can make the first half nil-nil, then I think they win the game. I'm going to say this right now. I think they'll win the game, and I think, therefore, they'll advance in the tie. But if Manchester City does, if they're not, if, if Real Madrid are not, um, if Real Madrid are losing or it's level on aggregate, I'm sorry, if, it's, if they're losing, then I think Manchester City will advance. So it all depends. I personally believe Manchester City will not lose the first leg. I'm saying this right now. I don't think they'll lose the first leg at the Santiago Bernabeu. And I feel like for me, they're going to do it. So, yeah, I mean, it's going to be interesting, guys. I'm going to have Manchester City to advance to the Champions League final to get revenge. And so, therefore, guys, my Champions League final is going to be Manchester City versus Inter Milan in the Champions League final, guys. So it's going to be very interesting, guys. Let me know your score predictions in the comments below. Like I said, guys, players to look out for for both teams, obviously. For Real Madrid, you got to be Vinicius Rodrigo. Obviously, Rodrigo is a name that Manchester City fans know very well of. And obviously, Courtois as well. And for Manchester City, obviously, Hurling Holland and KDB. So I want to know your score predictions in the comments below, guys. If you guys did enjoy this video, let me know in the comments below. Like this video, if you did enjoy. Subscribe if you're new out here. Comment below your thoughts. Comment section below, guys. And I'll see you guys later. Peace out.